So one of the first questions that our clients, potential clients often ask us is, do I have a case? The way that we look at whether somebody has a case or not is whether it meets starting with three main criteria. First is, was there negligence? Meaning, was there a mistake made by the hospital, the doctor, or the healthcare provider in question? Number two, we look at, was there causation? Meaning, did the mistake definitively cause harm? We often think about the idea of no harm, no foul, and that certainly applies in medical malpractice cases, and we can talk a little bit more about that in a minute. And the third piece that has to be there in cases involving medical malpractice is significant injuries or death. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. So breaking that down, uh, we have to have a what's called deviation of the medical standard of care. And in order to determine if there was a deviation, otherwise known as negligence, in addition to the highly trained medical malpractice lawyers at the firm reviewing the case, and our in-house nurse paralegals often providing additional input, we ultimately have to get the opinion of a doctor or healthcare provider who is in the same area of medicine as the hospital or doctor in question to review the records and provide us what's called a certificate of merit, which is essentially the stamp of approval that there was definitively negligence in the case. So it is not until we get the certificate of merit from a medical expert that we can definitively know that in fact there was negligence. But the investigation doesn't stop there. As I mentioned, the next piece is, if there was a mistake, if there was a medical error, did it actually cause harm? Did it worsen the patient's chances? Now we also have to involve medical experts in that. And that can be a tricky case sometimes. A lot of times people look at and they know that something wrong happened, okay? There was a mistake that occurred. But oftentimes in medicine, almost always, the injury happened in the setting of somebody already needing medical care. Maybe they were sick with cancer. Maybe they had been injured in a car crash and were getting uh, medical care for uh, orthopedic conditions. And then something bad happened. And sometimes, the bad outcome was unfortunately going to happen no matter what. And even though there was a mistake made, it actually didn't cause any harm. Another situation where it can be difficult to parse out whether a mistake actually caused harm would be in delay in diagnosis cases. Sometimes there are certain types of cancers that there was a clear cut mistake and the person ultimately went on to develop a very worsened form or later stage of cancer and you know unfortunately in some instances passed from it but many cancers even if they were diagnosed and treated earlier carry such a poor prognosis that you could not say that the mistake or the delay actually caused harm so you've got to have that causation piece and in our experience that can be one of the trickiest and most difficult parts of a case to determine and finally, as I mentioned, the third piece of the puzzle as far as whether you have a case is were there significant damages involved? This means paralysis. This means permanent lifetime injuries, repeated surgeries, uh, in, in unfortunate circumstances, death. Now you may say, why is it necessary to have substantial damages in order for there to be a case to undertake for medical malpractice? Well, the reason is because these cases are number one, incredibly difficult to win. Even in the most clear cut medical malpractice cases, there is always a chance that you could lose a trial. And that has to do with people's perceptions of litigation and people that file lawsuits and the lawyers that bring lawsuits and a general respect and admiration for the medical system. Because in reality, doctors and hospitals are generally trying to help. And most people believe that and they have a hard time holding a doctor or a hospital or a nurse accountable because they have that belief that, hey, these people were just trying to help and how can we say that they're responsible for this person's bad outcome? So because of how difficult medical malpractice cases can be, we have to focus on cases that have substantial injuries or involve a death. Another reason why we have to focus our practice on representing cases that involve significant and substantial injuries 
is because these cases are incredibly time consuming, incredibly resource intensive, and they're very expensive. And at the end of the day, we want to help. We want to provide value to the people that we represent. And what we do not want to happen is we work up this case, we get these hopes up, we take you along for this long journey only because of the limited amount of damages to be able to bring about a minor settlement that is eaten up by all the case costs or really doesn't make much of a difference in somebody's life. We are interested in working on cases and helping people where the outcome is going to be life-changing. And because of that, at Lupitan Uniton, we focus on cases that involve truly catastrophic, substantial damage situations where we know if we put the effort in, we involve all the experts, and we work as hard as we always do, we're going to make a true difference in your life.